so again, ladies and gentlemen, all we're looking into doing here is I'm not going to spend time. I'm not going to spend time plugging or showing you guys plugging in the points. But a couple things that I like visually can look at is again, remember I said the first thing I want to do is does it equal zero? And if it does, when? Well, if I plug in the point zero, zero, I know that's a slope of zero, right? So cool. Then when else would this be zero? When else would that equation be zero? When one is positive and one is negative, right? So you could think of like, I'm not going to write these in for each one, but again, this point. Right? And then you could plug in, you know, equals one, you know, plus negative one, or equals negative one plus positive one. And you could do that, but we don't need to write in. You guys can do this in your head and you don't get any points for showing your work anyways. If it obviously it is something that's more difficult, then yeah, show your work, right? Plug it in and like figure it out. But I think for a majority of these guys we can do in our head. At one comma negative one, that's gonna be zero. And negative one one, that's kinda gonna be zero. Oh, that kind of looks like a pattern, right? A lot of these, a lot of these problems, not all, don't assume there's a pattern. A lot of these though do kind of start showing patterns. Uh, let's look at one comma zero. One comma zero is one, zero, so that's a slope of one. Well, let's do it better. So at two comma zero, that's just gonna be a little bit steeper. Don't you guys agree? Yeah? Um, let's do at negative one zero. At negative one zero, looks like this. And at negative two zero, again, that's looking a little steeper. Okay. Um, let's look at zero two. Is that going to be the same slope as that? Well, if you go to zero, oh, I'm sorry, that's zero one, right? At zero one, oh, that's the same slope right there. Does this diagonal have the same slope of one? Well, let's see. That's two negative one. 2, negative 1. Oh, yeah, that's the same slope. So there's that little pattern that's going on there, right? So the, should, what should this diagonal be? Let's look at it. 0, negative 1. Oh, that looks like that's the same slope there, right? 0, negative 1, it's just negative 1. Negative 2, 1. So if I go to negative 2, positive 1, again, that's negative 1. Look and see how the diagonals are kind of helping us out there, right? And now this one is going to be 1, 1, so that's going to be a 2. And this one is going to be 2, 3, so that's like a 3, so that's like almost vertical. This one is negative 1, negative 1, so that's going to be a negative 2. And this would be a negative 3, so it's like really vertical. So then the question was, all right, well, what if I give you a point here at 0, 1? Like, where is the graph going? Like, what does the solution look like? Again, this is a representation of all the general solutions. So if we wanted to find a particular solution at 0, 1, like what would that graph look like? And again, the way I think about it is plot yourself down in the Atlantic Ocean. Look at what all the ocean currents are doing. Where are you going to go? Well, going to the left kind of looks like you're horizontal in here. So it kind of looks like you're being pushed as you're going to the left. The farther down you go, it looks like you're getting kind of pushed back up, right? So we could kind of say something's going like that. And actually, this is, these all have the same slopes, actually. So it's kind of interesting. Those actually all have all the same slopes, because it kind of looks like a asymptote, actually, a little bit. And then as we're going to the right, it looks like it's going there, and it's going to kind of continue tapering off. OK? And that's really all we need to do. All right, you guys want to try another one? No. No. Okay, what do you want to do then? A worksheet. Worksheet? Oh, don't worry, I have those. Don't worry, you'll get plenty of practice.
Hmm. <laughs> So from what I've seen, we'll look at the FRQs, but to give you guys a, a heads up, usually you're usually like drawing slope fields on an FRQ is like worth two points. Usually you get a one point is for like all the zero and like one slopes or something. So as long as you have like those and as long as they're like correct. Um, and then usually there's like another point for just making sure you have positive and negatives correct. But again, guys, I mean, it's fairly, I mean, as long as you're just careful, I mean, you're just plugging in values and then drawing them. Like, I remember when I was taking calculus, I remember we got the slope fields. I'm like, what? Seriously, this is like calculus? Like, what's, what's going on here? They really want us to do that? But again, if you look at the larger picture, it's basically understanding the general solution. That's kind of the important, that's really the important part. All right, looks like we got some talking, so let's go. And you guys, anybody sketch the graph yet? Got it? A couple graphs? Oh, I don't know. Should it cross the x-axis, though? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. See, the thing is, when you guys are sketching the graph, 
as long as you have a general shape, that's perfectly fine. Like it's not, it's not going to like mark you down. Usually there's like one point for sketching the graph, so they're not going to mark you down for being wrong. But you 